winter, 1942, and bombers were in the air over Berlin. Not every night. It would get worse. Much worse. I don't want to talk about myself, only it's my story too. Oh, a great story about a great story and a great tragedy about a farce. So, there I am trying to make a living as a movie writer in the middle of a war. I'd done my own time in the Great War of 1914 to 18. Army, uh, then business, then the Depression, and then Adolf Hitler. Don't get me wrong, I had nothing bad to say about him until it became a question of survival to say everything bad about him. Back then, in the winter of 42, he was still our leader. He had given us back our pride, and we gave him our trust. But that's another story. Not this story at all. Or maybe it is. Maybe this is one story about another story entirely. After the bombs, the birds. Life goes on and I... Yes? Mr. Zealot Olfanius. Yes. This is the Home Office. The Minister would like a word with you this morning. The Minister? Me? If at all possible. Uh, yes, of course. Um, when? A Never a good thing to be summoned by authority. And in this case... Please go in. Thank you. Mr. Zerlet Olfanius, thank you for finding the time to come in today. Dr. Goebbels, uh, not at all. My pleasure. Uh, my time is, is at the disposal of... Um, <clears throat> obviously, I... <laughs> Sit down. Coffee? It's real. Well, of course you will. You're a Berliner. <laughs> no donuts, I'm afraid. Uh. <laughs> Miss Volkman, coffee now, please. Very well, Minister. So, I understand you have collaborated... No, 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 no ...with no, the no. director Selpin. Herbert Selpin. Uh, yes, Minister. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, yes, yes. Um, over many years. Please, do try and relax. <laughs> well, it's not every day you get summoned to Joseph Goebbels' ministry without notice. I've heard only good things about you. Good record, good work, the party line, so... Don't worry, and, um, drink your coffee. Thank you, Miss Volkman. Will there be anything else, Minister? Not for the moment, thank you. A pretty German woman's derriere in a pencil skirt. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no sight like it in the world, so that old yes. Well, you, you work with actresses, so you'd be aware of that. <laughs> yes, Minister, I suppose I would. Heels, you. Give a woman 25% more in that department. <laughs> Wish I could say the same about Vili Lay and industrial production. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> what do you know about Titanic? Um, the liner. Is there another? Uh, British. Um, intended to be the biggest, fastest, most luxurious. Built in Belfast. Uh, sank on her first voyage. Great loss of life. A good story? Um, yes. Um, a great stage on which to set a number of stories. Uh, Portmanteau Tell, uh, La Ronde, that sort of thing. But not Jewish? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, obviously not, um... Well, um, not quite, you see. Um, I'm afraid I don't see... Coffee good? Uh, yes. Right. We see the great ship ploughing through the dark waters of the Atlantic. On board, luxury, undreamed of. The great, the glittering, the wealthy, the arrogant. In short, the bad and the beautiful and below, in steerage. Hidden from the eyes of the world, the ordinary folk, searching for a better life. Uh. Right in the centre of this mighty floating universe. Corruption and greed. The brutal power of the British Empire and the manipulations of the international Jewish conspiracy. This will bring the proud ship to its... Knees. Watery grave. Yes, yes, um, <clears throat> yes indeed. Minister, a, a, a brilliant concept. Um, British power and Jewish greed. Uh, 
And who is our hero? The captain? No, the captain is a cipher. No, it must be the first officer. But wouldn't he be British too? Not at all. Oh. <laughs> uh, let's say the original man went sick. The only replacement available happened to be a German. A fine seaman, fair, decent officer, who sees and fights the greed and corruption that will cause the ship to sink. We'd be rewriting history a bit. It wouldn't be the first time that's happened in this office, so let off it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, get together with Selpin, write me a script, something big, with love and heartbreak and, uh, yes, tears of sorrow and tears of anger at the swine who allowed this noble concept to sink into the dark, cold depths of the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> A wonderful story. Your leads will be played by Hans Nielsen and Zubilla Schmitz. Think big, Zolat Alfenius. That's something our leader has taught us to do. Hmm? Yes. Now, whoever you want, I'll get them for you. Damn it, man. I'll get you a ship. The Cap Arcona, the luxury liner, four locations. This is going to be... Ah! An epic. <laughs> <laughs> what a great tune that is. Two lyrics, of course, but a great tune. Now, go and give Germany a great motion picture. Uh, Miss Volkman, please see our friend out. Yes, Minister. Oh, um, just one moment. I believe that you are the man to give me the story I want to tell. Because whatever they say about the production values, the mise-en-scene, the style of the picture, it is character and story that counts. And I know that he who tells the story of the past owns a future. And that future will be German. Anything you need, you call me. I'll be right here for you. Thank you for sparing me the time. There were still cafes on Unter den Linden at that time. For some. And I met Herbert Selpin there. Well, here's to our project, Walter. And let's hope we don't go down with all hands. I have no intention of letting the minister down. <laughs> this could be a great picture. It will last as long oh, as... <laughs> let's not speculate on longevity. Did he do that German artist thing with Falkman? Yes. <laughs> Likes to think of himself as a bit of a Hemingway, are Yosef? Half intellectual, half street fighter. Well, old friend, down the hatch, as the British say. Bert, we're in public here. People listen. Loose talk is dangerous. More schnapps, waiter. We're working for the second most powerful man in Germany. Well, possibly the third. And besides, it's all research. Pip, pip, old chap. Though Soto, as you might write. Do you think he's really thought this through? A picture about a great enterprise going down at this time. Look, it's a job. It's a guaranteed budget. Biggest names in Germany above the line. Zubilla, Hans, and anyone else we want. Think of the design, the costumes, but we are kings. The kings are all departing, Volta. What is it? What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Why should it be? Come on, we've been friends since university. We've worked on a dozen projects together, brought them home too. Good pictures. It's what we do. You, um, you, you don't have a bad feeling about this project? We're not the conscience of a nation, Bert. We're craftsmen. We entertain people. You're right. Of course you are. I'll fix up appointments with Zubilla and Hans, and uh, do you want to run up a treatment which we can work from? And then we'll present to our Lord and Master. I've already got some ideas. So, <laughs> here we are. Here's to Titanic. And all who embark upon her. There's not a lot of drama about rising, believe me. As the American said, apply seat of pants to chair, Write. Rewrite. Bert Selpin had a few ideas. Directors always do, otherwise they couldn't put their names on the screenplay too. But to give him his due, 
He was good at telling a story on film. Good with actors. Well, perhaps depending on the actor. We met with our stars. Zubilla Schmitz. Mm, perfect. Thank you. So, Zubilla, my dear, what do you think? I hate the sea, but I have always hated the sea. Well, ever since that more now picture. Sirens of the Southern Ocean. But, Zubilla, you were wonderful. I was wet every day for a month. You won't be in the sea. You have my word. But I have a wonderful scene. You're on a life raft, and your lover is in the water. There is only room for one, and as a German woman, you accept his great sacrifice. No water, Walter. They, it's a bad scene. No one would believe but it. But you said you liked... No, 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 no. They both survive. The first officer and the mysterious beauty. Both? Yes, because he, he gives evidence at the inquiry. Oh. And she looks at him as he stands there. Their eyes meet across the room. Beautiful, beautiful. And hands will be so perfect. <laughs> Oh, you know, I've never worked with him, and I've always wanted to. His eyes so piercing. So. Shall we order? Oh, I never eat lunch, darling. But I want the script as soon as possible. And, dear Walter, remember, the audience want to look at me, not listen to lines. Give me scenes that'll break their hearts, and I will give you magic. And no water. It was a great scene. He drowns, and she lives to carry his child. No child. The good doctor will not appreciate sex outside marriage. On the screen. Besides, it is Hans Nielsen. Tough, but clean-cut. Good-looking, but manly. All action, but thoughtful. Made a great impression in The Great King. Germanic to a T, a straight arrow. What have you got me into, Bertie? I didn't know places like this still function. <laughs> That's the problem. Neither does Dr. Goebbels. <laughs> he doesn't appreciate the cabaret. Another drink. Make it whiskey. Just thinking about Zubilla Schmitz. <laughs> Cigarette? They're American. Three whiskies. Large, please. You're an actor, Hans. So act. Oh, I have no problems on screen, but you know what Zubilla's like. You've never appeared together. She's voracious. <laughs> I swear her ambition is to sleep with every leading man in Germany. <laughs> You'll find a way, Hans. What if she complains to Goebbels? I know it's unheard of, Bertie, but I really am a one-woman man, and I have the woman I love. And besides, dear Zubilla, she's no spring chicken. <laughs> well, she'll hardly be able to condemn you in public, never mind what she gets up to in private. She won't give up. She might report me, lie about me, say I'm a pink triangle case. She knows people in the party. It'll be fine. Trust us. I suppose I have no choice. So... Who else is going to be on this ship of fools? Fuhrbringer plays Ismail. Oh, God. Uh, he's Martin fine Lynn. hands. Don't worry about him. They say he's an informer. Well, they say that about everyone now. Besides, it's going to be a happy set. Truly. I mean, I have a feeling about this. Oh, and um, Monica Berg plays the little manicurist. Others, um, but mostly we'll be back in Berlin for them. Otto Wernicke as Captain Smith. He'll be joining us later. Oh. We'd better make a move. It's all right. They have a shelter here. I think I'll give it a miss if you don't mind. Uh, two weeks Thursday at 3 p.m. Script conference at the Ministry. Manicurist? What manicurist? The one Monica Berg will play. <gasps> because? Because the good doctor wants her in it. He likes her. He says she'll be good. I suppose I can do something. Splendid, Walter. Let's keep our master happy and then make the picture we want. That's fine, Bert, but remember what you said about Goebbels being the second most powerful man in Germany. Or the third. That also makes him the second most dangerous man in Germany. Now, can we get to a shelter? I began to see our story. A decent man trying his best as those above him demand the impossible in pursuit of their own ends. And framing them, a whole cast of characters. A young girl, a, a manicurist who falls in love with a, a violinist from the ship's orchestra. A thief who wants to steal a fabled blue diamond. In steerage, two men who, who love the same girl and fight, but later, ah, one is locked up and the other grabs an axe to save him as the ship sinks. And a grand staircase on which the lords and ladies, the rich and the beautiful, the drowned 
and the damned pass before us. Mr. Selvin, how good to see you. Dr. Goebbels. And my dear Miss Schmidt, <laughs> it is such a thrill that you are actually here. <laughs> I have been a devoted slave since your Leonian vampire. Such heart. Oh, Minister, you're too sweet, and the flowers you send. Oh, if all men were as thoughtful as you, then all women would be forever happy. And <laughs> champagne! <laughs> In honour of our leading lady. <laughs> and our leading man. Hmm. Mr. Nielsen. Dr. Goebbels, apologies for being so tardy. I was with my fencing master. <laughs> Bit of a tartar. Won't let you go until you perform perfectly. I'm certain you always perform perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> you lead the way yourself, Minister. Oh. Your broadcasts inspire a nation. Well. I'm hoping to find something of that quality, that, that steel and, and, and that compassion in the character our writer and director will give me. <laughs> Ah, Souvila. Hands, dear hands. I've wished so much for the chance of performing with you. For me, too, to be working with Germany's loveliest star is, is a great thrill. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish we could spend the day in such delightful dealings. <laughs> Alas, we cannot. We must, as our leader reminds us, get to the task. <clears throat> Zerlat Olfenius. Yes, thank you, Minister. I am um, <clears throat> fed up, seascape, under billowing clouds, and in the centre, approaching, titanic, majestic, powerful. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, well, I don't see it that way at all. Later, the ship. We must begin in England. Uh -huh. oh. In the board <laughs> of the White Star Line, where we see Sir Ismay, the managing director who is telling the board that the share price is falling. You see, we surprise the audience. They mm. expect a ship, they get a room. The board is angry, but Ismay seems calm. Cut to a more private room, where Ismay informs his cronies, businessmen, the Jews, whom you know the sort, that it is all a trick. And the Titanic will break the speed record to America, and the share price will soar. But letting it fall now, they'll buy cheap and make huge profits. But only so long as the record is broken. It must be broken, whatever the cost. And that is the fatal flaw which brings them crashing down. Then we cut to... Majestic and powerful enough for you, Walter? Cap Corner's a lovely ship, Bert. But what are you going to do about the funnels? Uh, props are building me one more. We only see them in a few medium angles. We'll use models for the long shots. <laughs> so, this is our home for the next month. With any luck, we'll be undisturbed so we can start making this picture something a little stronger, eh? Goebbels isn't going to like any surprises. You know what, Walter? I think it's time we got used to them. Because I have a feeling the Ruskies, the Ami, and the Tommies are about to serve us up a banquet. We're on course for a victory. I've seen unedited newsreel footage from Stalingrad. Believe me, we're not. We need to start thinking, people like us, about after the war. Are you crazy? All I want to do is make an honest picture. Something I won't be ashamed of when this is all over. Ahoy, Cap Arcona, two to come aboard. Don't worry, Wally. That lot back in Berlin wouldn't know honest anymore if it shot them in the foot with a howitzer. Bert, just shoot the script. Here we go, gents. One hand for the ship, one for you. Oh, it'll be fine. Don't worry. I've been writing pictures long enough to know that when a character says, it'll be fine, don't worry, you worry. Things started well enough. We shot a week of backgrounds, sea views, billowing waves and scurrying sailors. Whilst our actors arrived, settled in and studied their pages and we all got cold and miserable. This was no pleasure cruise. The Baltic in November left a lot to be desired. Ernst Fritz Vorbringer, a big name, but oddly absent from our screens for some time, played Sir Bruce Ismay. Arrogant, greedy, short-tempered. Some said it was typecasting. Now, Ernst, uh, what we have in this scene is Sir uh, Ismay talking to Captain Smith. No! What we have, Mr. Director, is Sir Ismay talking to... 
Nothing. Otto has been held up. I heard he was arrested for defeatist talk. I'm sure you heard wrongly, Ernst. We'll shoot around him and do the reverses later. Very well, as you wish. But it all seems highly unprofessional to me. Schnapps. Large. Walter, darling, uh, I'll join you if I may. Make it two schnapps. Cigarette? Mm. Not watching your masterpiece in the process of creation, thank you. <laughs> I got thrown off set. I kept giving the actor a line reading. Besides, it's freezing up there. Oh, really, don't let him bother you. Ernst is a terrible ham. I always thought there was something just a little cosmopolitan about him. And don't let him into your confidence. The weasel in form is also how I've been led to believe. By whom? I believe that ghastly man Himmler said something in a reception. But then one can hardly trust him. Zabilla, for heaven's sake, be careful. Oh, Heine simply dopes on me. I tell him he's a monster, he loves it. Of course, one day he'll realise I mean it, and then I'll be for the high jump. Ah, now, Walter, isn't the world a better place from behind a glass of schnapps? Down the hatch. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Oh. Mm. Do you sometimes feel guilty about all this? Oh, come on, Walter, you're just feeling sore because Bertie kicked you off the set. Believe me, I've seen more writers depart in tears than I've had hot sex, and I've had a lot of hot sex. <laughs> I suppose it's just the process, isn't it? Of seeing your baby leave home, out in the big world, making its own way. Hmm. Incidentally, Walter, dear, what do you know about Hans Nielsen? Hans? What do you mean? I find him somewhat cold, do you know? Standoffish. You mean he's resisting your irresistible charms. That's you? not quite what I mean. Why, it would be a better question, and is he to be trusted? Hans? Why not? He's a 175, yes? Absolutely not. They could still finish him. If a rumour got out, even if it isn't true. <laughs> Just because he doesn't want to sleep with you, Zabilla. Oh, one hates being rejected. It makes one feel so old. Zabilla, like Helen and Troy, you're ageless. And I will ensure that he behaves himself and doesn't steal any of your scenes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, talking of scenes... You don't happen to have a copy of the script with you by any chance. Why would I carry that around? Don't you know it off by heart? Rather sadly, yes. I think I do. And I think Bert changed some of Ismay's lines this morning. Of course he did. They always do. If you want to keep your cherry intact, darling, stay out of the picture business. Yeah, I suppose so. <sighs> what changes exactly? Changes of emphasis, more than anything else. I hope he's not thinking of playing around with any of my scenes. I'm sure he wouldn't, Zibella. When are you called? Tonight. We're doing the ballroom. Close-ups only, of course. Then I hope to join you this evening, Zibella. If Bert will let me back on set. As long as you promise not to give me any line reading. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> back in my cabin, I made a few notes and refreshed my memory of the script pages we'd done that morning. I was right. They had been altered. Not a lot. A word here and there. As I said to Zubilla, a change of emphasis. The sort of thing that always happens in production, but... But... But there's something I haven't told you yet. Before we left for the sea, I received a call. Hello? Sir Let Alphenius. Good, I've caught you. Minister... Um, I was about to go to the shelter. Oh, that can wait. I want you to do something for me. Of course. I've had an idea. We'll publish a book on the making of Titanic when the picture comes out. Oh. Uh, perhaps even give away copies in the cinemas or run it in the attack. And I want you to write it. Of course. Yes. Uh, an honour, Minister. Now, we'll sort out contracts later. Just be thorough and remember, any help you need, I'm here. Yes, yes, of course. Um, but I think I should get to the shelter. Oh, sometimes we must live a little dangerously, my friend. Right. Now, don't you find it exhilarating? At last, we too are on the front line. Don't ever forget that. Everything will be judged by history. Yes, of course. I understand, Minister. Oh, do you? Now, listen to me. There is a struggle in progress. Not just against our enemies, but against the enemy within. 
Our great leader is alone in his vision. But there are those who seek to influence him away from the purity of his task. I'm not sure I understand. And in this struggle, it is necessary for loyal party members to prove their loyalty and their steadfast character by choosing carefully and correctly. Yes. The consequences of failure will be terrible. Do not let me down, Zalatophanius. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Lights here. The DP needs them here and here. I want to pan over Ismail's shoulder and see the first officer coming down the grand staircase. We only have the last third of the staircase, sir. <sighs> we'll marry the shots back in Berlin. Just make certain it's dressed to there. Where are my actors? I'm here. Ernstans will be last still in makeup. I'm not sure where Monica is. All right. Someone find me Miss Berg. She is due on set. Now, Hans, in this scene, you are concerned about the increase in speed ordered by Ismay. Yes. You know Titanic will be heading into the iceberg zone, but mm -hmm. the thing is, he overrules you, and because you're the good officer, even though you know how you should act, you obey him. Bert, can I have a word? Uh, not now, Volta. Later. Ah, the writer. I believe we met briefly in Lentz a few years ago. Ernst Fritz Fulbringer. Of course, Herr Fulbringer. I remember. It's a privilege to have you back. Ernst, please. And can we take all that wonderful script, wonderful part stuff as set? Do you have a light? I think they're waiting for you on set. Let them. The less time I spend near bloody Nielsen, the better I like it. Is there a problem? Zivilla mentioned her concerns that she... He's spying for Goebbels. I assume he is. I may be wrong makes it difficult if you can't trust your colleagues. <laughs> I know you're a writer, but you can't really be that naive, can you? Dear boy, you can't trust anyone, not even yourself. Least of all yourself. Do you see? That's the sheer genius of the system. I don't believe that. Take it from an older man. When the circumstances call for it, you'll find that you really surprise yourself with what you are able to do to get through. Now, tell me. Bert Selkin. You've known him for years. Yes, indeed. You trust him? You just told me I can't trust anyone. But as far as it goes, he won't stab me in the back, cut my scenes, any of those tricks. I won't end up on the cutting room floor. I need this part. Things haven't been going so well for me since... since I turned in a sympathetic rabbi in due sus. I mean, what was I supposed to do? Bert's got a good reputation. Obviously, I couldn't... Uh... Wait, you've read the script, you know how the story gets told, but I'm not in charge. God knows why we had to go on location for this. It does give it a dash of authenticity. You think they'll notice in the cinemas? No. Goebbels wanted us out of Berlin. Keep anyone else's fingers out of his pot. Well, here's the thing, my friend. This is a prestige project. If it comes off, it'll reflect very well on those who are part of it. You would do well to remember that. What do you mean? After Jesus, I was called in by Himmler. He mentioned how disappointed he was with my rabbi. He pointed out certain facts and... They all want to get the leader's ear, Walter. They want to be his number two. Himmler, Goering, Goebbels, the whole damn crew are fighting for influence and power in everything they do. Your big picture is just one tiny skirmish in their endless war. I don't intend to be a casualty. And now, I intend to get out of this damned wind and onto the set. God, isn't Subilla looking older these days? It's the booze, you know. Kills the complexion. So sorry I'm late. Ah, Zubilla, ravishing as always. Triumph of the makeup department, darling. Nelson's darling, you look divine. Are we ready to go, Bert? We are, Ernst. As soon as someone finds me, Miss Berg. Where is Miss Berg? I sent a runner to a cabin. There seems to be some problem. I do not accept problems on my set. Solve it. We'll do a rehearsal. Faces, everyone. Top of the scene, hands. Go. So is me. I must have a word with you. Madam Olinsky, please excuse us. I have no secrets. Go on, Peterson. Perhaps I'd better not. 
The lady... Is quite capable of listening to honest talk from an honest man without being upset. Very well, then. Uh, very well, then. We must reduce speed at once. Must? You tell me must, Mr. Peterson. I have no truck with... Bert, what is that noise? I do not see sailors rioting off screen anywhere in this scene. What is happening? Someone? I believe it's the ship's crew, sir. High spirits, that's all. You know sailors. Oh, this is unacceptable. Have they no discipline? With this kind of useless shower sailing our ships, no wonder we're losing the bloody war. <clears throat> Don't worry, Bertie. I'll go and have a word and quiet them down. They sound somewhat beyond quietening, Subila. Well, Hans, the day Zubila Schmitz can't handle a room full of randy boys hasn't dawned yet. I shall be back. Volta, what are you doing here? I thought everyone was asleep. <laughs> it's been a long evening. You're not. I like to look at the moon. Ah, there's no moon tonight, Bert. Perhaps more suitable to our task, then. Isn't film all about light? Yes. Abel Goss called it a cradle of light. But we've turned the world on its head, Volta, and made a cradle of darkness. You're being very poetic. <laughs> Isn't that my job? Overwriting, you mean? Don't change the subject. I wasn't aware there was a subject to this conversation. All right. The subtext, if you insist. I don't insist on anything, except my former statement... It has been a long evening. Thank God for Zubilla, at least, shutting up those sailors. Well, as you say, there's no moon, so I'm for bed. Good night, Volta. I know what you're doing, Bert, and you can't. It's only a movie, Volta. The story you're telling, it's not the story we agreed to tell. Collaborators, yes? It's how we always work. Collaborators? <laughs> Certainly that. But who with? I always thought with each other, but you're cutting me out. You're the writer, Volta. You write the recipe, but I cook the dish. I always cooked the dish. No, wait. No, you wait. Yes, we've been friends for years, but sometimes these times call for more than friendship. What's more than friendship in this world? The way things are. What these people are doing. Everything, Volta. This whole bloody murderous mess we're in. Can't you see that? Is that why you're turning this picture into a condemnation? Oh, am I? Of whom? Don't be naive. Germany. The party. Goebbels isn't a fool. He can read a film as well as either of us. Better. Granted. A very beguiling devil, but never a fool. I care about this film. Well, frankly, old friend, I don't. And if that means Titanic never sees the light? The picture has nothing to do with light. It's my picture, too. I won't let you spoil oh, it. Oh, grow up, Volta. We're not students anymore. This is serious. I won't go down with you. And I won't let the Titanic go down. <laughs> Can you hear yourself? Bert, we've been friends a long time. Will you reconsider? Please. I beg you. Does that have any meaning at all anymore? I'm sorry, Volta. And now I really must go to bed. Come. Walter, darling, have you come to understudy hands? <laughs> I'm afraid not, Zubella. Besides, who sleeps with the writer? Mm. <laughs> I rather wanted some advice. Mm. My advice comes with schnapps. Thank you. How's it going? Oh, I never have a clue, darling. I just stand on my mark and emote when they tell me. Is that really how you feel? I'm an actress. I interpret your story the way my director tells me. I'm concerned, you see. Of course you are. Pour another, will you? Bert Selpin is not making the picture I wrote. He's telling a different story. I think he's more concerned with how it will look after the war is over. The winners write the history, Walter. It'll look how Goebbels wants it to look. Mm. Oh, I get it. This is what you writers call the subtext, of course. Bert thinks we're going to lose the war. Yes. That kind of talk could get a man into trouble. But then say so good all that stuff tonight about the Navy. Maybe he doesn't care. What about you, Zabella? Walter, darling, you and I and Hans and Ernst and all the rest of us, German artists, have pretty much hitched our wagons to this team, haven't we? And believe you me, if we don't win, then... 
engagements for Sibella Schmitz, who all of us are going to be few and far between. What exactly are you trying to say? It's in your script, darling, or should be. When the ship sinks, it's every man or woman for themselves. In the end, what do you owe, Bud Salpin? Pour another before you go, darling. I wrote long and late that night, trying to sort it all out in my mind. It seemed to me that each was only for himself. Not one of us was for the other. And as for friendship... Yes, friendship. <sighs> and finally, as I thought it never would, sleep came. Walter. Walter. Wake up. What is Wake up. Uh, I need you. Oh. Hans? There's something I have to tell you. I need to say this. Oh, what on earth? I need to talk. What is it? Good, it's three in the morning. Oh, I've got a headache. What can I do, Walter? <sighs> Selpin wants me to play the first officer as a coward, overawed by authority, doing what is told by his leaders. That's not what I wrote. <laughs> He's independent. He stands for honesty, decency, the German way. As far as Bert Selpin's concerned, the German way is burying your conscience in total obedience to the state. Oh. That's the story he's making. I can't do that. Look at the trouble playing a good Jew made for Ernst. This could kill my career. Talk to him, Hans. I tried, Walter. He won't listen. He said, he said if I didn't play it his way, He'd tell my girl about me and the stewardess. But you in the stewardess? Which one? But the pretty one, of course. Oh, never mind that. Look, look. I'm going to have to tell Goebbels myself about Selpin before he can inform on me. Do you see? I can't go down. I won't go down. Tell Goebbels. I could do it. Everyone does. Everyone? What did you think? That they were going to let us all come out here and be free? This is Germany, Walter. Have you got a cigarette? Some schnapps? Oh, I need something. Thanks. It's not really a question of who informs anymore. It's who informs first and best. Don't you see? We have to stop this, Walter. The one thing I do see, Hans, is that Bert Selpin would never be an informer. Oh, it's fine for you writers and directors. People expect you to have a conscience. I'm an actor. I can't take that chance. In my script... When the Titanic goes down, much of the drama is played out through the actions of individual men and women as they face the simple question, will I do anything at all to save my life or do I have enough pride, enough courage left to stand firm and face what must be faced? Of course, it's easy enough to write that sort of stuff. We're all heroes on the page. Come in. I need to send a telegram. Urgently. I'm sorry, sir, but civilian messages are not permitted on the ship's telegram. Berlin. Minister Goebbels. His eyes only. Production went on. Exposed film mounted up in the can, and the story became more and more of Herbert Selpin's telling, and less of anything resembling my original script. And then came the day when our producer arrived to take stock. Wonderful to have you with us, Minister. My dear Miss Schmitz. Mm. Mm. Ah, Ernst. I see the air is doing you good. Minister, it's a holiday. So grateful for the chance. Selpin, let's talk. I am afire to hear how things are going. Of course, Minister. I'm afraid we have no facilities for developing and printing here, so I, I can't show you any rushes. Indeed. Ah, oh, this sea air gives one an appetite. I bought some Frankish wine to enjoy. Mr. Nielsen? I stayed in my cabin during lunch. Somehow, since our falling out, Bert and I found it uncomfortable to be in the same room together anymore. Come. I missed you at luncheon, that old thing. Ah, oh, you know, Minister's so busy... Always something to change in the script. 
they say writing is all about rewriting. I was particularly interested in your last effort, though. Most concise, I thought. I, I didn't want to do it. Bert Salpin's a friend, a colleague of... But your duty to the party comes first, yes? The picture, the story, a... The... <laughs> you intellectuals. <laughs> you never understand, do you? All of these things, Walter. May I call you Walter? Yes, um, of course. Uh, I have talked to the cast. Most interesting. They all have a fine story to tell. But I believe you were the first in alerting me to the problem. And the book of the picture? How does it come along? Yes, well, I have been working on it. Noting everything? Including your doubt? and concerns? I thought I should. You have carbon copies? Of course. Good. I knew somehow from the start that I could trust you. Is that why you came to me first? You have no idea who I went to first. Now, if you'll be so kind, I will take a copy of your notes. How long will it take me to read the material? An hour. No more. Then in 70 minutes, I shall expect to see you in my state room. Thank you, Walter. It was the longest 70 minutes of my life. Was I right? Trying to protect our film? Trying to protect Bert Selpin from himself? Throwing a mother and a child out of the lifeboat to save my own miserable... Walter! This is Inspector Lotz. Oh, he's here to assist. Coffee? Cigarette? No, thank you. <clears throat> Very well. Oh, it appears from your notes that things are falling apart here. A change of emphasis, of mood, you write. Yes, I, um... Your director is taking the picture in <laughs> the wrong direction. Yes? I believe so, Minister. And spoke disrespectfully of the naval officers aboard the Cap Arcona. Well, they were a bit noisy and... Yes. Hmm. Do you believe, if things continue as they are, the picture will be acceptable for a German audience? Well, it's not really for me to decide. I... Get off the fence my friend. Yes. Good. I agree. Now, perhaps you will do me a further favour. Uh, yes, of course, Minister. Hmm. Please accompany Inspector Lotz to Selpin's cabin and inform him he is off the picture and under arrest. But, uh, and must accompany the inspector to Berlin, where he will have a chance to explain his actions and his words. No! Walter, Walter! Don't you understand? You are with us. Or you are against us. Come in. Bert, I... Uh, this is Inspector Lotz. Bert, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I... Look, I'm... I'm sure it'll... Oh, I'm mistaken. It'll be all right once they... Oh. It'll be all right. You promise, Walter? You shouldn't have done it. It's my picture, too. It's Germany's picture. You had no right. For God's sake, I warned you. I pleaded with you, Bert. But I did everything I could. And then you did this. Bert, I... Inspector, I'm ready to go. I, uh... I assume I won't be needing a case. Bert... No. Bert. Of course. Shall we? Goodbye, old friend. Schnapps. Large. Walter! What's happening? God knows. I don't. Hans said. Oh, Hans! Walter, do, do you know anything? I heard they took Bert away. Oh, uh, Schnapps, please. Oh, Sobina? Wine. What kind of wine? Oh, any bloody thing. Oh. Is it true about Bert? I believe it is, Zubilla. Oh, no. 
Waldo, you're his friend. Are you all right? Well, I'm devastated, obviously. I mean, I'm, he is my friend. Mm. I think all of us... Well, the way he was taking the picture... Should we do something? After all, he is our director. Look, let's not jump before we know what's actually happening here. It may be nothing. But it could be back in a couple of days. All this will be cleared up in no time. We should see what Dr. Goebbels has to say tomorrow. At this very moment, thousands of our soldiers, our brothers, our sons, our fathers, our husbands, our heroes, are enduring the unbearable cold and privations of Stalingrad, defending us and all we hold dear against the Russian thugs. Their task is our task. Our task is total task given to the German people by our leader and our destiny. In this task, there can be no absentees. You are with us, or you are against us. And we will not tolerate opposition! Werner Klinger, who many of you know as a fine director, will take over the helm of our picture. I have increased the budget so he may reshoot scenes that are unsuitable in their present form. Now, I must finally report the sad news of the death of Herbert Selby whilst travelling to Berlin. I am informed he suffered from a heart attack early this morning. Thank you. I look forward to attending the premiere of Titanic with you all in Berlin. I know we shall have a great picture. Quiet on set. Clapper. Titanic, scene 275, take five. And Tad being quite oh. right, of course. We simply got through. We finished the scene scheduled to be shot on the Cap Arcona, and we never actually talked about anything at all. But then... What was there to talk about anyway? Well, it's not a wrap yet, but at least... At least we'll be off this wretched ship on dry land where the floor doesn't continually move under us. And I, for one, will be heartily glad to get back to Berlin, whatever the weather. So, Hans, the life of a sailor wasn't quite as you expected. I'm not sure I expected anything, Ernst, except Walter's fine script. Ah, the writer. Right. Sorry if I gave you a hard time, old man, but you know how it is. Uh, we got there in the end. So, a toast to our writer. Our writer? Our writer. Oh. <clears throat> Where's Subila? Has anyone seen dear Subila? They're all wondering where you are. Well, here I am, Volta. It's peaceful out here. Mm. I was looking at the moon. It's lovely, isn't it? Yes. It's hard to think it's the same moon looking down on Stalingrad. Here we drink champagne and eat too much, and out there they die. There's nothing we can do about it, Zubella. We never started, but maybe when we finish our picture, some lad in his dugout will look at you and think of something beautiful, something better, something that's worth fighting for. It was you, wasn't it? What? You betrayed your friend. You can't know that. And you can't hide it, my dear. I had to, Sibella. For the picture. For all of us. I'm not condemning you, Volta. Any more than I'm condemning myself. It's such a tiny thing, isn't it? Just a word or two here, a letter there, and here we are. At least we're still alive. At least... And now I think it's time for you to come in out of the cold and join the rest of the company inside. Shall we go? And there you have it. Our story. The story of Titanic. Our film was eventually finished. Post-production took place. A score. Posters. All the paraphernalia of our world announced the coming attraction, Titanic. And eventually, the night of the premiere arrived. And then, nothing. At all. 
I heard rumours the picture had been released quietly in Essen, or was it Hamburg, or maybe Wright, and played a few days to dwindling audiences, and then... There's an interesting parallel between dictatorships and the picture business. No one ever likes to give you the bad news in case it reflects badly upon themselves. Me? I would have thought that Dr. Goebbels had little to worry about in that department. His reviews were already in, and frankly, they weren't good. Bert Selpin had talked about surprises from our enemies. By 1945, there were none left. We all knew how the story was going to end. The Russians were in the outskirts of Berlin. Hello? Mr. Zealot Orphanius, the minister would like a word. Could you make your way... Should I go? Wasn't the whole thing over at last? Miss Volkman! This way, please. Where are we going? What's happening? Follow me, please. No heels and pencil skirt for Miss Volkman today. A helmet? A dusty soldier's great coat which almost buried her. An expression of deadly fear. He was in some kind of bunker. There were steps leading down to it. Stained concrete. Inside the smell of stale air. Stale tobacco. Stale alcohol. Stale existence. Mr. Zealot Orphanius, Minister. Oh, come in. Um, I'm afraid I can't offer you coffee. Please, uh, sit down. It's been a while since we last met. Rather different circumstances, Minister. Thank you. Well, God knows whether we shall come out of this dead or alive, but I know we shall come out of it with our honour intact. I shall, of course, stay at my post with our leader. He's here. Well, where else would he be at a time like this? The German people were not great enough for the mission he gave them. They have failed him and his sacred cause, but he will never fail Germany. Was there something you wanted, Minister? Titanic. Yes. It must be destroyed. As our leader dies, so shall I die beside him. On the funeral pyre of a Viking warrior. The flames consuming, cleansing all. This world is no longer a fit place for heroes. Find the film, Walter, and destroy it. Thank you. Shake my hand. Now go. How strange and alien our beautiful world appears now. All our striving. Finally, they were made mad, all of them. Mad in a mad world. I didn't destroy the film. Needless to say, I was the writer. There was always a chance I could get a showing and a repeat fee. Oh, they banned it after the war, but by the early 60s, there were versions out there. Sometimes I get invited to a showing at some student film society. I talk about the making of, but not too much. And I never tell them about Bert Selpin. I say... What we have is a tribute to him. That's what I tell them. And then I go home, and I sometimes look at the moon and think, as Zubilla Schmitz did all those years ago, is this the same moon that shone down on us then, that significantly did not shine down on the night of my betrayal? Oh, Ernst did fine after the war. His career went on. Hans makes a few films. I see him on the television every now and then, but not so much. Zubilla was right. She never really worked again. A couple of minor roles, no more. There was drink. 
always drink and drugs and uh, she killed herself in 1955 <laughs> it's a different world schnapps please large well do you know the end of the story the ship sank really it did two days after Goebbels and his wife killed themselves and their six children pills not a Viking pyre of course the Allies bombed our floating set the Cap Arcona it was transporting prisoners the crew and 420 SS guards escaped ashore the prisoners ex-concentration camp inmates threw themselves from the sinking ship and tried to swim for it the RAF had been told the Arcona was a troop ship they machine gunned those in the water 4,500 died Schnapp, sir. Large. Thank you. 1,517 died on the Titanic. I wonder if Bert Selpin would have appreciated the irony. <laughs>